Have you ever wondered why certain software systems remain robust, adaptable and maintainable over time, while others quickly become obsolete or prone to errors? The difference often lies in the foundational principles that developers stick to when crafting their code. Programming principles are a set of guidelines and best practices that aid developers in writing code that's not only functional, but is also clean, maintainable and scalable. In this video, we'll dive into seven essential programming principles that every developer should be familiar with. We are starting with DRY, which stands for Don't Repeat Yourself. Essentially, you should avoid duplicating code. Whenever you find yourself repeating the same block of code more than twice, it's a good indicator that you should extract away a function and reuse it. Let's say you have three functions that all format dates in the same way. Instead of repeating this formatting code in each function, you'd create a separate function and call it within the others. Next one is the KISS principle, or keep it simple and stupid, which states that we should aim to keep our code as simple as possible. Take for example a complex if-else chain in your code, it might be better to use a switch statement or even a dictionary, making your code simpler and cleaner. Next one is SOLID, which is an acronym that represents a set of five design principles. S stands for Single Responsibility Principle, which means that each class should have a single task or functionality it's responsible for, ensuring easier maintenance and fewer side effects during changes. For instance, if you have save user and generate report methods, instead of combining them in a single class, it's a better approach to have a user database class which will have the save method and have a user report class which will have generate report method. O stands for open closed principle, which means that software entities should be open for extension but closed for modification. This allows developers to add new functionality without altering existing code, promoting reusability and reducing errors. Let's say we have an area calculator class that calculates the area of rectangles. Now if we add a circle, the area calculator would need modifications. But instead of modifying it, using the open closed principle, we can extend our shapes from a base shape class, allowing easy additions of new shapes without modifying the area calculator. L stands for Lisk of Substitution Principle, which means that child classes must be substitutable for their base classes without causing issues. This ensures that inheriting classes maintain the properties and behaviors of their parent classes. Following this principle, we should refactor this code to ensure the proper inheritance. This means that a class cannot extend another class unless the other class methods are applicable to this class. I stands for Interface Segregation Principle, which means that clients should not be forced to depend on interfaces they do not use. This means that interfaces shouldn't have too many methods. Whenever possible, we extract away small interfaces so that classes can then implement only the interfaces they require. And D stands for Dependency Inversion Principle, which means that high-level modules should not depend on low-level modules, both should depend on abstractions. This encourages a decoupling of software components, enhancing flexibility and scalability. In this example, the switch is implemented so that it can operate only on light bulb, but we can modify it so that switch can operate on any device implementing switchable device, not just the light bulb class. The next principle is YAGNI, which stands for you aren't gonna need it, which is against adding functionality until deemed necessary. If you're building a blog website and thinking about adding a feature to predict the user's mood based on their writings, but it isn't needed for the website to function as a blog, then it's probably best to leave it out, at least for now. We also have source principle, which stands for separation of concerns, which suggests different areas of functionality should be managed by distinct and minimally overlapping modules. For instance, in a weather application, one module can handle fetching data, another could handle managing data storage, and another one would control the user interface. Each has its own concern, separate from the others, instead of combining all of these modules in one single codebase. The other principle that we have is the load principle, which is law of the matter. It is a guideline of developing software, particularly object-oriented programs, Think of a restaurant scenario where a customer gives the order to the waiter who then delivers the order to the chef so the customer doesn't directly interact with the chef. 
And the last one is composition over inheritance principle. It suggests that it is more beneficial to use composition, combining simple objects to create more complex ones, over class inheritance. Imagine you have a class bird and a class airplane. They both can fly, but it doesn't make sense to have an inheritance relationship. Instead, you could have a can fly class and compose your bird and airplane classes with it. Mastering these seven programming principles will significantly enhance your approach to software development and problem solving. If you're interested in diving deeper into the world of software design, I recommend you watch this video about 7 essential design patterns next.